Hi, Ian Roberts and welcome to Mastering Composition. So I've been gone for a month now teaching this uh, course, Mastering Composition. It's been going great. The students have been having a good experience, I think, such as they tell me. And I just wanted to talk this week about the role that shadows play, that darks play in creating drama in your image, that they can really manufacture the drama for a good painting. Because today, everything is so well lit. You know, you think of a mall, let's say, or so many people's houses with big windows. Everything is really well lit. And if you're setting up a still life or an interior, doing an interior and it's all well lit, the problem is when it's full of light, it kills the form. The more light sources you have around something, the more you lose the sense of form. The more you have a single light source, the more you start to craft a sense of form. So there's a really interesting book called In Praise of Shadows by a Japanese author named Tanizaki. And he talks about how the Japanese like dark, sort of shadowy places, and they don't like things to be well lit. And I mean, I'm not sure this is true or not, but the point is there is a beauty to the sort of the dark and the shadow things that allow, you know, the light to come through, the, light, the thing you're actually looking at. So you can see in many of the great paintings in history and in 19th century, early 20th century, there's often just a single light source and it just forms such a terrific sense of the object bathed in light with a strong sense of form. So those beautiful darks in behind it and then these rich highlights craft this sense of form. Well, the point was there was no electricity. There was just north facing windows because the north facing window, the light stayed the same all day. And just look at these two Vermeers, for example, single window and look at how that single light source crafts the form. And then these two portraits by Anders Zorn, North light, single source, creates a lot of drama, all the background just sort of filling into darks, not much information and how the light hits the thing he wants us to look at. And Andrew Wyeth, he often does the same thing, a single stark light source and look at the way as the light rakes across that barrel, how it brings out the sense of form and structure. So I was attracted to this image it's a photo I took in Provence years ago on market day and it was a really crowded day and yet for some reason this woman was just sitting alone in a cafe just surrounded by the darks and I loved the quality of it and I did the painting a couple of years a few, or several years ago now really and I cut her out I don't know why exactly I just was thinking it would be more interesting without her but I was drawn to do it again and I wanted to include her this time so here is the process that I went through as I painted this and you'll notice right from the start I'm painting in the darks and how it has this fundamental role of kind of carving in the background so even before I start to paint it the lit things start to come together the darks play a really important role in the whole image so I hope you enjoy that I'll see you at the end so we want to build up the darks and I just got some well it's pretty much just ivory black a little bit of blue touch of white and you can see I just sort of take all the darks. It's a pretty small brush for what I'm doing actually, but I just take all the darks, carve it around the head, and just bring that whole shape forward rather than trying to carve the light because the canvas, the moment I get the dark in, the, the value of the canvas, uh, and this is 18 by, 13 by 18, this canvas, just uh, raw canvas, gessoed three times and stapled to a board. But you can see the moment I put the darks in, it starts to define the whole painting, right? And then down here in the bottom, I'm getting a little bit lighter because there's light bouncing into the concrete down there. Um, but this is the whole thing with the darks. You put the darks in and then a good deal of the painting is kind of already taking care of itself. Now here's this first, well, the second, but the first sunlit piece. And you see how dark that sunlit piece of uh, table is. There's a second one back there. I'm still using a pretty big brush just to kind of get these shapes in there. Uh, but then you can see I've put in the shadow side, which is kind of a dark purple color to kind of give that 
you know, you can just see the relationship between those two. Um, and then the chair is obviously, you know, very bright red, but they are a long, long way from pure pigment. There's a lot of other color in there. And then the light hitting, sort of half hitting that uh, chair back there just sort of gives us the sense that, you know, the light's bouncing back into it. We can sort of see it, but it's not too, um, not catching too much attention in the first little bit of light on that lady's uh, knee and then the darks in around the shadow side of her dress. But there's lots of shadows going on that are going to start to, to there's her, her forearm, one, you know, just a mark for that, a little bit of hair. But you'll see that a lot of the, sh the uh, dark side of things, there's just a hit of color for her face. And here's the, you can see it's pretty much the same value, right? A little slightly different color, but same value pretty much as the toned canvas. So by putting in all the darks, just leaving the toned canvas already tells you a lot. Um, but a lot of the, uh, the objects, like the woman, for example, the back side of her will just disappear back into the shadows. But you can just see it's going simply shape by shape. Now we're getting into these chairs and I have to sort of make sure that... The one thing about the chairs is you've got to make sure the perspective's right or it really looks wonky amazingly quickly. So there's a little bit more light hitting that arm compared to at the back. So just sort of bringing around a line or two of color just to kind of give it that, but not nearly as intense as on the lit chairs. And then here are the shadow reds and blues for the back of her sweater. And you see they just sort of disappear into the black behind it so that that edge starts to disappear. And then here's just a couple of little spots of light that just indicate, oh, there must be some lights going on. I mean, you see, they're just sort of a little flick here and there, and they give us the sense of uh, something going on in the background. And now this is pretty pure pigment. This is cad red and some orange, just to catch the lit side of her sweater. And then I'll put the blues in. But you can just see that there's a few spots there that are really catching the light. And then this is, as the form turns around, that shadow then becomes, that red becomes darker. And then I've put in the lit side. There's two, there's two different, there's quite a lot of different things going on in that sweater. But I just sort of have a, a lit side to the blue and lit side to the red, and then all the others sort of move into shadow. But I still want to keep color back in those shadow areas. I don't want them just to go completely dull. So you'll see that I'll spend some time sort of crafting the form of how things are turning in space there. There you're sort of getting some of those shadow shapes where there's folds in the cloth. And I work on that. And then there's a little dark line underneath the newspaper, a highlight there, just catching the light and then a little bit more work on the face. I don't want to sort of, oh, and also the head is too big, so I just had to kind of cut her hair down. But I don't want to overwork anything. I don't want to spend a lot of time uh, on the hands or the face or anything. There, you're just sort of getting that line of orange for the sunlit chairs. And again, you've got to make sure that you get them so the perspective's right, because they, they look like really warped and weird. Look, I have to move way over here in order to do it. I'm kind of in the way, but uh, there you can just see. I mean, I've got the perspective organized in my head. I've got the drawing right before I start. So I'm just making sure that that's working. And then that table comes out in front of the chair so that we could have get its placement in space. And then the, the changes I made through that mesh were too too strong, so I had to soften them. And then there's a few places where we've got shadows just of the of the table legs. And then with a couple of more little pieces, we're all finished. And then there's the finished painting. And you can see how much of the work is being done, the drama of the painting, obviously, by the shadows. So the front section is getting the light, and the whole thing is being illuminated by this big dark behind. And that's why so many of those paintings from the 19th century and early 20th century have such beautiful drama to them because they're using this single light source with lots of darks to, bring, to make the light really come alive. So 
So I hope you found that was helpful. Please do subscribe and please do sign up on my email list so that you can receive these, e these uh, YouTube right to your inbox once a month. The next video will be the first Tuesday of April. I hope you have a fantastic month. Please do leave a comment and I will see you in April. Bye for now.